I love doing this, these vintage sci-fi stories. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I love the shirt, too, and that's why I'm wearing it. I have a collection of like 50 or more Hawaiian shirts. And um, anyway, um, so I wear, I try, I'm trying to wear, when we do the YouTube shorts and when we go live, trying to wear a different shirt. But who's keeping track? I can't always keep track of that. Big announcement coming up. I really want your feedback. So I hope you'll stick around. Um, and give us your feedback on the big announcement coming up in just a minute. We love communicating with you. Uh, I love getting your feedback. I love doing your requests. Um, we, have, we have, and I'm so grateful for it, but thousands and thousands and thousands of people here on YouTube and then on the podcast. So we get behind on the requests. So it takes me some time to catch up, okay? Um, but we'll talk about that a little more in, in just a minute. Anyway, I love communicating with you. And I'm going to put in the chat, we now have a Facebook page. I have been uh, derelict, I think is a good word for it, in promoting this channel and the podcast. I haven't done a very good job of it. So it's amazing that we have all these people from all over the world um, that listen and watch what we're doing. Um, but I, and, and it's funny because I get encouragement from you to me. Hey, Scott, you got a Facebook page? You should have a Facebook page. I would share your Facebook page and all of that. So in the chat, I just typed, uh, and I guess it's a link. I hope it's a link. Our Facebook page, which I haven't caught up with all the um, uh, stories so far. I think there's 20 or 30 on there. I'm going to work on that tonight and add some more. But if you have a Facebook, um, if you have a Facebook profile, if you're on Facebook, if you would go there, man, that would be awesome if you would share that. And like it, that's great. Um, if you want to share a specific story, that would be great. We could really use your help, and I'm asking for that help only because we have so many people who say, how can I help you? How can I help you? And I just really appreciate that, so thank you. Uh, I watched Rollerball earlier tonight. Um, the movie Rollerball, I, I loved that movie when it came out. I don't know that I've watched it since. Anyway, uh, just started re-listening to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Burns Works, have amazing replay value. He's the best. You know, I haven't done any Jules Verne. One of the reasons we, we started doing the podcast was to expose people to some authors and stories that they've never heard before. It's really hot in the booth. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one of the reasons we started it. And then one of the reasons it's called Lost Sci-Fi. But we should we do some Jules Verne? Let's take a quick vote. Uh, should we do some Jules Verne? I, I'm like, um, I, I was thinking about doing the time machine, but that's Andy or the island of Dr. Moreau. But those have been done by hundreds of people on YouTube and for sale and everything else. But I, I'd be interested because you, those of you who are with us tonight, are uh, probably rabid consumers of vintage sci-fi, I would think. And that's probably why you're here. So I'm curious, do you think we should do a Jules Verne? Um, something that's already been done. Um, I nearly burst when you read A Stainless Steel Rat. I love The Stainless Steel Rat. I love that. I love that. Uh, that's a great story. I love Harry Harrison. And, and the truth is, I say this about a lot of the authors, but I do truly love their work. Lost Jules Verne. I'll let, that's, a, that's a good idea. I'll have to see if I can find some of that. Um, I think you can, but I think it's also great that you focus on the authors who have less popularity. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why we do this. And, um, but I will be honest with you. When we do a Philip K. Dick story, we get a lot more listens and subscribers and everything. Um, and I have purposely done few, I, I, I've narrated a lot of Philip K. Dick, 
but I haven't put it yet in um, in the podcast. But we're at it. Well, you you know that because we've just done three Philip K. Dick stories, and there are more in the coming month. And I, I'm going to get to the big announcement in just a second. And I also want to tell you what's coming up because I've I've branched out a little bit more, and we're we're doing more authors. Uh, some very popular that haven't been heard from yet on the podcast. So, okay. Um, so I, I hope uh, some of you will take advantage of the, um, I hope some of you will take advantage of the Facebook page. And we're going to work, we're working on Twitter and Instagram because we get people that say, hey, if you had that, I would share. So we're, we're doing Facebook first. Let me catch up with that in the next few days. I'll have all the episodes on our Facebook page so you can help us there and it would be greatly appreciated. I, uh, Asimov has a lot of unheard stories. That is so true. Um, we are going to do two of them and put them together in an episode in October, I believe. Darwinian Pool Room. And what is the other one? Uh, Winnie and Pool Room and Ring Around the Sun. Two Isaac Asimov stories that I don't think are incredibly well known. Um, yeah, so we're, we're doing those. Uh, there are definitely some lost short story authors that get lost in the mix. C.H. Thames, uh, Clifford D. Simak, C. C. I'm in Costa Rica. I speak poquito, which is small, Espanol, a little Espanol. Um, uh, I'm a less popular sci-fi writer. Too bad I'm not vintage yet. Yes, um, that, that doesn't fit our niche, unfortunately. Um, but we are doing, there's more Clifford D. Simak. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, yes, I am doing Before Eden. Uh, which is an Asimov story. Asimov, right? Or is that Arthur C. Clarke? I have so many stories in my head. I think that's Asimov, isn't it? Where is that? No, that's Arthur C. Clarke. I shouldn't have doubted myself. Uh, Before Eden by Arthur C. Clarke from 1951 is uh, one of the next stories that we're going to narrate. Now, we narrate these, and these are available for sale as audiobooks. Um, but then they eventually make it to the podcast. So let me get back to my agenda, the things I wanted to discuss. Uh, let's, let's see what else we have. Yes, we are doing Before Eden, and that is Arthur C. Clarke. Um, I thought this was tomorrow, but then realized it's Friday morning here. Yeah. Um, Brad, I think everybody's doing good. Uh, you can't directly find the Facebook page through the search. You can't use the dr link directly. Um, that's a bummer. Has anybody else tried to use the link? Has anybody else tried to use that? Let's see if anybody else can do it. Um, you ever see anybody with a capuchin monkey pet in Costa Rica? I have not, Christopher Kelly. I have not, but there are Tons of capuchin monkeys. Um, we stayed at a bed and breakfast about a month ago. And, uh, okay, the link worked for somebody else. Good. Uh, thank you for liking the page. Um, yeah, it, it, if you will share an individual story or the page or something on Facebook, we'll be able to grow our audience. So we appreciate that. Uh, we stayed at a um, an Airbnb in Costa Rica. It was a driver's license thing. And and I'm not one of those um, those haters. There are some people that come to a foreign country and they hate that things aren't like the way they were back home, wherever they came from. I'm not one of those people. I'm just thankful to be in Costa Rica and I love this country. And um, so anyway, the driver's license process, Lord have mercy, it was a mess. Um, but here's what's really cool. We, we decided to, to, well, it doesn't matter why. I found an Airbnb with a waterfall right there, like 15 feet from the balcony 
okay? It's in the jungle in Costa Rica. So you can hear that. Thank you all for liking the page. Um, so anyway, it was just amazing because all night long, you can hear this. And it wasn't a big waterfall. It was a small one. But there are waterfalls all over this country. And I, for some reason, I just really love waterfalls. Anyway, so the next, uh, the second night we were there, capuchin monkey, 10 feet from the balcony. Uh, and they have in Costa Rica, my wife is Costa Rican. They call themselves ticos for the men, ticas for the women. So my wife is a tica. And uh, she calls the, the monkeys that you are maybe most prevalent, at least from where we've been. Um, they call them congos. And, uh, and they make the really deep sound early in the morning. It's just cool to wake up from a hotel. We don't usually stay in hotels. We stay in Airbnbs. Um, but to stay in an Airbnb, wake up the next morning at 5 in the morning and hear these deep, resonant monkeys. I, I just love monkeys. Anyway, uh, so thank you for that, that question. It's a great question. Uh, Harry Harrison did a trilogy of Eden, West, East, and the other ones. Um, lizard people that evolved instead of mammals. Okay, did not know that. Uh, found the page via the link, liked and shared. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, 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 I, I love, I love Costa Rica. Capuchins look way cool. And uh, what did you say? Sound awesome? Yeah, it's, it's neat to be able to, to see toucans, um, uh, just all kinds of animals in Costa Rica in the wild all over. Let's get to your questions, and then we're going to tell you what we're recording next, what's coming up on the podcast, and uh, we're going to tell you about the big announcement. So I'd love to, to address your questions. Waterfalls, a nice way to stay cool and relaxed. Absolutely. There are waterfalls all over this country. Interesting point, some of the waterfalls are not on public lands. They're on private property. And you pay five or ten bucks to, to access the property and see the waterfalls. It's just really cool. It's really cool. Uh, Brad says, oh, and Costa Rica has been my one overseas destination I think I could live in. It's a wonderful country. It really is. It's a wonderful country. And the people here are amazing. They're, they're very nice. They're just very nice. They really are. And, and I, I get treated uh, very well everywhere I go. So anyway, questions. If you have them, type them in the chat now, please. Thank you for liking and sharing the uh, Facebook page. I really appreciate that. You know, um, we do mention from time to time the buy me a cup of coffee link. Um, so that's a, a, another way to support us. And some people do a dollar or two dollars or whatever. Um, but we try not to, to spend too much time on that and not mention that very often. Um, but um, there's a lot of ways to support us. Your comments on our YouTube pages, our, our YouTube videos, the comments, I am told, help in the YouTube al algorithm, help the discoverability. When you like it, uh, when you like something, that helps the discoverability for other people because it shows that it's popular. Uh, so comments and likes on YouTube are greatly appreciated. Even if you don't listen on Apple Podcasts, you can go there and uh, give us five stars if you think we deserve it. I, I don't want to get five stars if you don't think we deserve it, but we'll take it if you do think we deserve it. Anyway, um, so you can do that. You can give us a, a five-star rating on Spotify. That's greatly appreciated. So we're, we're, getting, we're getting greater discoverability because of all those things that you have done to help us. So we appreciate that. Uh, liked and shared, feline exceptional. Thank you. Got to the page on Facebook eventually. Greatest YouTube commentator, gracias. Well, there I am with the Spanish again. William Gibson, Neuromancer, discuss, lulls. Okay. Anybody want to discuss that? Go ahead. Um, 
Thank you for your wonder stories. Sack of nuts. <laughs> I love the name. We have some very uh, uh, creative people here. So thank you. Do I have any book recommendations for stories that take place somewhere else in the solar system? That's the niche I enjoy the most. Um, oh gosh, I've done some Venus stuff. Uh, uh, let me, uh, New Jeans, My Bays, let me see if I can find that. I've read the book twice now, and I'm still getting my head around it. You know, I will say this, Brad, and uh, Lee Brackett. Oh, that's Science Fiction Reads. You're going to like what I'm about to share with you. Um, I am not, I am so totally not the guy who analyzes a story. Um, I know some of you think I should be that guy, but I'm just not. I read the story and then decide whether or not I'm going to narrate it, or I at least start reading the story. And if it gets my attention, then I go, okay, I'm going to narrate that. And then it'll eventually make the podcast. But I don't do the analyzing thing. I just enjoy doing it, if that makes sense. So anybody else can discuss. That would be awesome. Ben Bova, Josh Stark, um, not in the public domain. I don't think so. Uh, William Gibson, truly vintage. He was ahead of the present when it was still just sci-fi technology. William Gibson. Let me look up William Gibson real quick, see what I can find. Uh, and, and I've done this about uh, public domain before. Nothing there. I've talked about public domain before. And the reason uh, that I talk about that, I don't see any William Gibson. I don't see a single William Gibson sci-fi story in the public domain. A quick check showed me nothing. So I don't know about that. Um, long story short, the guy selling peanuts at a baseball game in the early 90s was yelling, sack of nuts, sack of nuts. Thought it was funny. <laughs> I do too. I do do to second nuts. That's just funny to me. That's just, you know, I'm an old guy, but still boyish humor works for me. Okay. I would imagine chooses your different voices would take at least a bit of analysis. They fit so nicely. Thank you for that. You know, before, and let me just discuss the process real quick. Before I narrate a story, I read the story in its entirety. I make note of all the characters that have more than like one line. Um, the good news about short sci-fi is rarely are there more than four or five characters that um, have a lot of lines, okay? So I then read the story specifically looking for clues um, about how that person is, you know? Um, I have kind of a doctor voice. A doctor voice is usually very prim and proper and talks kind of like this. Some of them who are um, doctors who are less assertive might be like this and I don't talk as loud. Uh, so anyway, that that's such a great question. Um, it's a great question observation too. So I, I do, I, I make notes. And so I've got like, like uh, there's a story I'm doing, a Philip K. Dick story. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, I've got so many Philip K. Dick stories in my head right now. Uh, Upon the Dull Earth is a Philip K. Dick story we're doing. It, it is one of the next two or three stories I will narrate. And in that story, I, I just read it in its entirety yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, so in that story, there's a main character who is an 18 or 19-year-old female and her boyfriend who wants to be her husband. And there's the mom and the dad and I think a daughter, a, a sister. And that's it. 
So the dad is going to be the deep voice guy. He's going to be this. The boyfriend, I don't remember they mentioned his name. So he is, um, I am guessing, a few years older than 18 or 19. So he'll just be my regular voice and not too deep. And I'll just, anyway, so that's the process that I go through. And uh, so it's a great question. Um, thank you. I don't know how to, uh, Uwe Beck, perhaps. I don't know that I said that right. By the way, uh, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd be curious uh, where you are from. And anybody else that's joined us and hasn't already done that, told us where they're from, that would be cool to know, if you don't mind. Don't have to. Uh, Keanu Reeves was in a William Gibson story made for movies, Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, I really like the new cover art in the videos. Thank you, Rafa. You are the first person to mention that. I have, yes, these are AI generated. Uh, there will be no AI generated audiobooks on our channel. I will always narrate all of them 100% myself. I select them, I uh, record them, uh, read them first, record them, edit them. I do all of that myself. But my graphics sucked. <laughs> my graphics were hideous. So I did some research about AI and uh, yeah, and sometimes the graphic, the first time I, I type in what I want, on the, I don't feel bad about using the graphic because it's, uh, I mean, I, I'd be curious to anybody else's feedback. Um, thank you, Brad, for saying you like the art too. Uh, I'd be interested in your feedback. I don't think that's a bad thing, but you will not hear some AI voice uh, narrating the audiobooks ever. If there are no new audiobooks or no new podcasts, I'm either really sick or I'm dead. Uh, <laughs> that's my promise to you. I will not do that. But the, but the art, it's taken the graphics. My graphics were horrible before. And because uh, I'm, I'm not a great graphics guy, but I really like what we've done now. A any other feedback uh, would be great on the graphics if you like them. Uh, Rafa, thank you. Uh, do you have a favorite author? Probably a dumb question. It's like asking a singer what their favorite song is. Actually, no, I, I don't. And you're right. There are so many. Like, I could tell you, I, like the new Ray Bradbury one that we just released today. Holy smokes, I love that story. Uh, Philip K. Dick, Harry Harrison, Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke, um, H.G. Wells. I mean, come on. There are so many. So, yeah. AI wouldn't be able to copy your voice. Well, that's great. Deb Murphy, Arkansas, USA, and then be noticed your new, gra uh, yeah. You're in Arkansas, Deb? Uh, I love the text-to-image generators. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I'd be interested. You say you're in Arkansas. You know, I lived many years in Arkansas. I worked as a television news anchor in Arkansas. I worked on the radio, several different radio stations in Arkansas. I love Arkansas. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to go back to Arkansas because I don't leave Co Costa Rica. Um, and if I do leave Costa Rica, my wife and I are going to take a cruise in Europe. That's what I really want to do. Originally from Hamburg, Germany. See, I wondered, um, uh, close enough on the first name. I, there was a basketball player. I used to be a television sportscaster too. I've done a lot of different things. Uh, and I thought there was a guy named that they with the same spelling as yours that was Uve, but I I might be wrong on that. Anyway, now you live just north of Toronto. Awesome. Uh, right on. Keep the voice real. I promise you, Cassard. Always. Uh, I love the old-fashioned covers from sci-fi books, but AI can do that too, in the style. Yeah. Uh, more Asimov. A lot more Asimov. A lot more. Uh, Deb is in Arkansas. Northwest Arkansas, perchance, or somewhere else. Uwe Boll. I don't remember who the guy's name was. Uva. Okay. Thank you for the uh, phonetic spelling. Uva. Cool. I love unique names. Not that there's anything like Scott is not a... <laughs> Scott is not a unique name. 
Um, but I, I like unique names. And uh, my wife's name is Flory. Well, actually, my wife's name is Floor. And uh, she called herself Flory all her life. And I call her Florita Muy Bonita. But that's a different name. And, of course, that's Spanish. So uh, I have not seen the Foundation's TV adaptation. I've been so busy uh, recording. You know, uh, and I covered a little bit of this last time we did this. But um, we went live and I, and near Batesville. Okay, cool. I know the area. Uh, an hour and a half north of Little Rock. Yep, I know the area. Um, what, what, what was it? <laughs> What was I talking about? Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, we did the Facebook Live. At that time, I was still doing uh, the, I, I really pretty much only have one other author that I do work for, and he's a good friend, been friends for a long time. He's a Western audio, uh, Western writer, Western fiction, really good guy, great stories, great guy, great stories. So I was, after we did the live, I was busy doing his story, so I wasn't recording any new sci-fi. And then I got COVID again. And I was knocked out for like six weeks, I think, where I, I, I was so tired. And you know the COVID drill. So I, did, I, didn't, uh, I didn't do anything for six weeks. I could barely, there were times when I could barely do the podcast. I don't know if any of you noticed the voice is like really soft on the podcast uh, for a few of them. Anyway, so I just got started recording sci-fi again. Uh, we're taking a break from his Western audio books. Probably won't do any of those till January. So I've got September, October, November, December. We're going to do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, do I speak Esperanto? I don't know what Esperanto is. Enlighten me, please. I got sidetracked, sidetracked. I wanted to say earlier that I think you analyze your stories more than many of us. You have to read the book, then analyze each character to find their voice. That is true, Brad. That is true. I, I do um, I, I do the whole thing. I do all of this myself. So I, you know, some people, really successful narrators, Scott Brick comes to mind. He hires people to do the research and all of that, which is really cool. Um, but I'm kind of a control freak and a perfectionist. And so I, I pretty much uh, want to do everything, if that makes any sense. So I like reading it and getting the feel for the character. I think that makes for a better narration. I think. That's my opinion. I could be wrong but I think it does. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Type them in there. I want to go to telling you what we're, just what we're reading, what we're narrating next. Uh, Upon the Dull Earth by Philip K. Dick. Now, most of these then will not make their way to the podcast for a month or two or more. Most, not all. Uh, I'm doing The Call from Beyond from 1950 by Clifford D. Simak. Uh, I have a request. I don't remember who requested that. I thought I wrote that down. The Man Who Could Work Miracles from 1906 by H.G. Wells. Then I'm doing Arthur C. Clarke's Before Eden, Murray Leinster's The Gregory Circle, A.E. Van Vogt, who kind of kicked off the vintage sci-fi, uh, the, the era of, of sci-fi. Not with this story. Uh, this came in 1963, but I'm doing The Expendables by A.E. Van Vogt. Somebody mentioned Lee Brackett. I am doing Out of the Sea from 1942 by Lee Brackett. I am doing They Twinkle Like Jewels from 1954, Philip Jose Farmer. So, just in the last three, uh, you've not heard A.E. Van Vogt on the podcast or Lee Brackett or Philip Jose Farmer. Uh, there's another Harlan Ellison story that I found that is in the public domain, The Untouchable Adolescence 
from 1957. Then we're going to do two short Isaac Asimov's, Darwinian Pool Room, Ring Around the Sun. Pool Room is from 1950. Ring Around the Sun is from 1940. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke, uh, Encounter in the Dawn from 1953. And Gordon R. Dixon, Cloak and Stagger. Okay, so that's what, what I'm narrating next. Now let's see if we've got any more questions. Um, oh, let's see, where are we? Like the AI cover art and the graphics to introduce vintage sci-fi. Thank you, Kassar. I'm glad you guys like it. And I, 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 I want to give credit where credit is due. Let me go back again and find the first person, Rafa Vasquez. Rafa, are you in Mexico? I don't remember if you told us where you were from. Anyway, uh, Rafa Vasquez. I love the name. Rafa Vasquez. Ooh, I could do something with that in the story. Anyway, <coughs> um, uh, so thank you for mentioning that. Um, Harry Harrison was the president of the Esperanto Society. The stainless steel rat spoke it fluently because the League of Planets used it as their standard language. Interesting. I don't remember any mention of that. And I love Harry Harrison. What's my opinion on steampunk stories? If it's not vintage sci-fi, and I'm not being flippant, but if it's not vintage sci-fi, and, and those, um, well, anyway, I don't, spend any time on it right now here's the thing there are like i said this before last time there are like eight or nine thousand that i know of maybe ten thousand vintage sci-fi short stories in the public domain at the moment that i know of in my lifetime i will never be able to get uh, i don't know how many i can get done but i'm doing as many as i can as fast as i can and still maintain good quality so that's my focus. That's what I, I love. I'm dating myself now, but you can see I'm not young. I dig it. I love it. So that's, I don't really have an opinion. Um, what does your sci-fi library look like, Scott? All pulp paperbacks or digital or something else? Great question. Here's the answer. Um, I, when I moved to Costa Rica, I left almost everything behind in Dallas, Texas. So I have very few books and very, very, very few books and no sci-fi did I bring with me to Costa Rica. I gave away, I sold or gave away everything I owned, uh, except for hallelujah, this booth. Um, yeah, so yes, Rafa, I thought you were from Guadalajara. Uh, close to the town that gives tequila its name. Cool. Um, oh, now that's interesting. The app Duolingo offers Esperanto course. That's cool. I never got into Duolingo, but I should because I need to improve my Spanish. Uh, let me ask you this question. So of the, the stories that I told you I'm narrating, not the podcast, but narrating up next, Gordon R. Dixon is new. We've never heard from him on the podcast. Philip Jose Farmer, Lee Brackett, A.E. Van Vogt. Those are all new. Um, Harlan Ellison, we've done one other story. There's not much Harlan Ellison in the public domain. Arthur C. Clarke has been a relative new addition. Um, and so has H.G. Wells. So uh, I'm curious, your thoughts, are there any names of the authors that I mentioned that I'm narrating next? Are any of those exciting to you? Philip Jose Farmer, cool. Um, anybody else? Because I'm just curious if any of these, somebody mentioned Lee Brackett earlier. Um, so we're, we're doing Lee Brackett. And I'm going to get to the announcement in just a minute. Um, the big announcement. And I hope you think it's a big announcement. I don't like to, uh, um, you know, pump something up and then it'd be crappy. So uh, look Lee up and she sounds really interesting. Yeah. I, I, and there are some more that are awesome. 
Science fiction reads nice. I've been obsessed with Bracket for a while now. Cool. Um, are you familiar? Science fiction reads, or is anybody familiar with Out of the Sea by Lee Bracket? That's would be interesting to know. Okay, while you guys are answering that, type in any other questions that you have. And the big announcement. Okay. When we started the podcast, we were doing one story a week every um, Tuesday. H.G. Wells, Deb. Okay, great. There's a lot more H.G. Wells that we're going to do too. A, a lot more. So um, when we started the podcast, we were doing every Tuesday, and that was it. And then I forget what happened, but we had like this explosion of new listeners, and and I was getting emails like crazy, and um, it just getting a lot of good feedback. And so I did Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. I don't remember how often, but I did it for a little while. Then when we got to middle of August, man, things just took off. Uh, really crazy. Crazy good. Thank you for that. And so that's when I decided to do September to Remember with a story every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for the entire month of September. And that has seen another huge explosion. So I want your honest feedback. Please only give me your honest feedback. We decided for the month of October, we are going to release an episode every single day. So there are 31 days in October. There will be 31 episodes in October. So is that a big announcement or not? You may go, oh, I don't really care. <laughs> I'd just be interested in your feedback. If you like that idea, um, and you may not have noticed this, but, uh, but we have made a, a focus or put an effort on some longer stories as well. Um, but there will be some short ones in the month of October because there's going to be 31 episodes. Anybody digging that? Anybody liking that? I got a woohoo out of Brad and then crickets. <laughs> and, of course, it takes some time. There's a delay of some kind. So... Um, I just, if you, if you think that's, was that a big announcement or was that not, uh, Deb Murphy likes it. That's huge. Don't go into burnout on us. I promise I won't new jeans, my bays. I can't wait. Great. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, the good news is a lot of those stories sounds great, Josh. Thank you. A lot of those stories have already been recorded, narrated some of them even months ago. So, uh, pink. Is it Pink Dostoevsky? Did I say that right? Anyway, every second day in September has been awesome for my mornings. October is going to be just brilliant. Great. Rafa, great news. Any special, any special spooky stories for Halloween week? Now, there you go, Rafa. I hadn't even thought of that. I hadn't even thought of that. I should. Uh, okay. If you're talking spooky stories, who's the first author that comes to mind? Anybody and everybody. Uh, M. Teixeira. Is it Teixeira, by the way? Because uh, I'm, I'm thinking of Mark, the former baseball player. And I think that's how he spelled his name. Uh, E.M. Forster. Yes. I, 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 um, the machine stops. I'm going to get to that. Uh, 31 days, 31 stories. I'm looking forward to them. Great. Repent Harlequin, said the TikTok man. Short story by Harlan Ellison was in the movie. Yeah, it's not. Uh, they were accused and prosecuted for plagiarism. Yeah, that story's not in the public domain. Uh, Bradbury. Josh, what does that mean, Bradbury? Let me tell you the lineup. Now, this is subject to change, and I'll tell you why. Because I may come across a story that I really want to do, feline exceptional, that's awesome, two thumbs up, thank you. For some reason, I thought Mary Shelley first. Interesting. Mary Shelley, I don't think, has any short stuff. Harlan hangs on his stuff even now, yeah. So I did find The Untouchable Adolescence from 1957, which is, I think, only the second Harlan Ellison story I found in the public domain. The other one was Glowworm. And yeah, Harlan Ellison is one of those people that 
renewed copyright. There, there, some stories would have been um, out of copyright, but then they changed the law again. And then uh, you had 28 years to renew the copyright, and people did that. So, um, oh, Ray Bradbury has some great spooky stories. First person, the first author that comes to your mind for spooky sci-fi vintage. Um, I'd love to get your feedback. Okay, let me tell you the, the tentative lineup for October, which I am really excited about. Um, and I think in October we've got, uh, let's see, one, one, one. Murray Leinster, Jack Williamson. I think there's only one, yeah, there's only one time in October where we double up and have two stories, and that is um, Isaac Asimov, October 20th, tentatively, Darwinian Pool Room and Ring Around the Sun. And I may even add a third story, uh, a third Asimov story. Okay, let's go back. Well, I'll tell you the rest of uh, September first. How's that? Let's do that first. Um, okay. The Shape of Things released two hours before we went live tonight. The Door in the Wall by H.G. Wells. Then Tanks by Murray Leinster. Then Arm of the Law. Somebody mentioned Harry Harrison. Harry Harrison. Then a really cool Asimov story ends September on the 30th called The Pause. That is a real, I love that story. Um, a Walk in the Dark by Arthur C. Clarke comes to mind as a creepy, yeah. Um, um, but didn't we do that already on the podcast? I think we did. Uh, for a third one, you could do Nightfall. It's my favorite. I don't. Remember, if Nightfall is available in the public domain, let me check real quick. No, not there. I'm glad you guys are, are liking the idea. I don't think Nightfall is in the public domain. I'm glad you like the idea of October. It's going to be really cool. Um, Oh, Transformation by Mary Shelley. All right, let's see about that. You are correct. Tales and Stories by Mary Shelley, 1891. I don't know how short it is. It looks like it, I don't know, that's pretty big type. So, yeah, let me put that on my radar. Cool. Uh, uh, let's see. Damn, possibly you have. Ha ha. All right, Science Fiction Reads. I don't remember what you're referring to, so help uh, if you can. Forget about that one. It was the longer version, wasn't it? Yes, I, I do believe it was, yes. Nightfall, it, yeah. Um, but hold, hold that thought just a second. Yeah, not in the public domain. Slow glass. I'm not familiar with slow glass. Who did that one? Was that Shelley? All right, let me check. No, I don't see that. Okay. All right, now I forgot what I was going to share with you. Um, oh, let me throw this name out. <clears throat> what about H.P. Lovecraft? I have not done any Lovecraft. Uh, yeah, I thought we had already done Clark's A Walk in the Dark. Thank you, Science Fiction Reads. What do you think about H.P. Lovecraft? Let me tell you why I've stayed away from Lovecraft so far. Because so many people have done Lovecraft. Maybe, you know, we could do our own or lend our own treatment to Lovecraft. But um, 
not familiar with his works. Yes, HP. Anybody else uh, uh, think we should do that? HP Lovecraft? We went to, well, I missed what that was there. I need to save that Mary Shelley story. Because now I've forgotten what it was. And I guess I can look at the chat. What was that one? Lovecraft, yeah, you'd be down for Lovecraft? Okay, cool. Well, maybe we should do that. Well, maybe we should do that. What was the Mary Shelley story? Because I need to make a note of that. Because we need to, to do that for sure. Could you please type, somebody type back in what was that? Uh, what story that was? What was that? Um, okay, I'm going to tell you the lineup, tentative lineup. For October. And this one, this lineup is incredible. And there are some people you've never heard of in there. Um, Color of Space would be an interesting one. Let me write that down. Lovecraft is tedious. Okay. There you go. All right, let me give you the lineup for October. And I'd love to hear your impressions. We start off on the first with Philip K. Dick's exhibit piece. Love that story. Then this guy, Lawrence F. Willard. I did a YouTube short about him. Uh, it, it's so amazing. <coughs> this guy did one story. I can't find out anything about him except two years before his short story, Rabbits Have Long Ears. Two years before that, he wrote in kind of the letter to the editor section of a sci-fi magazine. And it, it's fascinating. And then Lawrence F. Willard disappeared. Um, I would listen to a Lovecraft and give it the benefit of me thinking it's too scary for me, but I love your nar narration. Deb, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, Robert Silverberg, okay. Lovecraft is good. Yes, do. Uh, HP, Lovecraft. Transformation. Thank you. Greatest YouTube commenter. I want to save that. That, that. that Mary Shelley needs, you know, like who's ever heard of Transformation by Mary Shelley? I had not heard of that. So, um, Slow Glass has another title, Light of Other Days, Bob Shaw. I'll have to check into that. I love that longer version. I read it as a book. Okay. Here's the rest of the lineup for October. Again, subject to change because there are some stories. Like now, I'm going to add probably an H.P. Lovecraft to October, and I'm probably going to add uh, Mary Shelley to October. Um a Message from Our Sponsor by Henry Slazar. Th this little section here, three in a row, are people most people have never heard of. Like, have any of you heard of Lawrence F. Willard, Henry Slazar, or James Blish? Anybody? Heard of any of those three? That's coming up. Uh, Winston Marks, you know I like Winston Marks, Foresight's Retreat. Uh, Jonah of the Jove Run, Ray Bradbury. Then we're going to follow that up with a Philip K. Dick story that was super creepy to narrate. I mean, just, ugh. Uh, is anybody familiar with The Crawlers by Philip K. Dick? Great story, um, but it gives me the creeps. So maybe I should change that around Halloween. Maybe we should have like a week leading up to Halloween. Uh, you've heard of Blish. Cool. The others know. Uh the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, 1886, by Robert Louis Stevenson. The only reason I've, I've held off from doing that is, again, because it's so well known. And, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't do it. It's a great, it's a great idea. Um, and it might be a ton of fun to narrate. You know, I can just see me getting into that. Yeah, I... I, it's funny, I do talk with my hands, as you can see, watching this now. But when I'm narrating, oh, man, sometimes I get right up here and I do this. And anyway, uh, so that's a that's an interesting idea. Okay, um, 
Jonah of the Job Run, Ray Bradbury, then the Crawlers. Then another guy that I really like that's just not very popular is George O. Smith. And uh, the story is called Home is the Spaceman. Um, yeah, Shelly shorts would be appreciated. I wonder how many shorts there are by Mary Shelley. I don't know. I'll have to check on that later. No sense wasting your time on that. Anybody else know George O. Smith? I don't know him. Uh, Charles L. Fontenay with a story called Z. And it's an odd story, but I like narrating it. Uh, Harry Harrison, you know, is one of my favorites. The Repairman. August Derleth, A Traveler in Time. Then we're going to do Progeny by Philip K. Dick. The Gregory Circle, Murray Leinster. Then I just narrated this one, and I loved it. Going to have to, anybody a Jack Williamson fan? I need to do some Jack Williamson. Um, uh, the Cosmic Express. I just want to hear you do the voice and narration. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, then Before Eden by Arthur C. Clarke on October 15th, again, tentatively. Uh, then The Expendables by A.E. Van Vogt, Out of the Sea by Lee Brackett. They Twinkled Like Jewels, Philip Jose Farmer. Foster Your Dead, Philip K. Dick. Isaac Asimov's Darwinian Pool Room and Ring Around the Sun. Arthur C. Clarke's Encounter in the Dawn. Gordon R. Dixon, another guy we did a lot and we've not done a thing. Cloak and Stagger. Again, I like George Smith, George O. Smith. So, um, Rat Race, interesting story. Hero from Yesterday by Robert Silverberg. Alien Equivalent by Richard R. Smith. Invader from Infinity by George Whittington. Dust Unto Dust by Lyman D. Hinckley. Nice Girl with Five Husbands, Fritz Leiber. Love Fritz Leiber. And Tony and the Beatles by Philip K. Dick. So there's a mixture. I, I think it's a good mixture of new authors we've not featured before. And then authors that most people have never heard from before. And then the standard bearers, the guys that, that you've heard from before. Silverberg, Philip K. Dick, uh, Arthur C. Clarke. But I don't have any H.G. Wells, I don't think, in October. And that will change because I'm narrating some H.G. Wells now. So, uh, and then, maybe some of these go in October too, The Elephant Circuit by Robert A. Heinlein. It's another Heinlein. It's in the public domain. Another R. C., uh, author C., Arthur C. Clarke, No Morning After. Interesting, super short story. Ross Rockland. What story did I do by Ross Rockland? Um, now we have an excellent mental picture of you narrating with your hands. I love the energy. Yeah, I, I do. I'm all over it, man. It's just, uh, it's just me. You can never have too much PKD. I agree. Uh, Stanislaw Lem. I didn't. Um, I, I hope I didn't ignore that. Let me see. Because I've looked up. Stanislaw Lem before. Nothing on one source. All right, let's check one other. I think that there's just nothing there in the public domain for Stanislaw Lem. I think. Could be wrong. Stanislaw Lem. Yeah, nothing that I can find right now on a, a super short search. Um, Feline Exceptional says there are five main stories by Mary Shelley, The Mortal, Immortal, The Evil Eye, The Dream, Transformation, and The Invisible Girl. Those are all shorts. Uh, Feline Exceptional. Halloween is going to be great. Yeah, I need to see. I, I appreciate. I didn't even think about that. I need to do, don't you think, like a week Leading up to Halloween, really uh, cool stories. I think that's what we need to do. Yeah. Uh, do me a favor. Scott at Lois. 
we're going to have to end pretty quick because I'm about done. Uh, Scott at LostSciFi.com. Send me, if you would, please. You don't, no obligation. But if you would, send me the stories you're thinking I should do for Halloween. Scott at LostSciFi.com. Oh, and The Mourner is another Mary Shelley, if I recall correctly. Let's just see what else we can find under Mary Shelley. Holy smokes. The Mourner is indeed one. Not super short, but, oh, there's all kinds of them. The Evil Eye, The Elder Son, The Dream, um, A Tale of the Passions. Oh, there's all kinds of Mary Shelley. The Sister of Albano. I don't even know how to say that. The Pole of Pilgrims. The Mortal Immortal. What the heck? What, thank you for mentioning Mary Shelley. Okay, Scott at LostSciFi.com. If you would, eh, you know, in the next, if you, you'll forget it probably if you don't do it in the next few days. So I'll leave that totally up to you. But uh, send me your thoughts on Halloween, Halloween week stories. That's a cool idea. Let you guys decide what we do there. That's really neat. That's a great idea. You know, and this is, uh, I don't know how often you think we should do lives. I know that we don't have a lot of people live, but hundreds of people will listen later. And that's cool. And eventually, you know, maybe if I did this live on a scheduled basis, like every two Thursdays or something, I don't know, every uh, two weeks, I did not get a lot of sleep last night. Can you tell? Uh, there's a compilation of Shelley's short work available in the public domain. Amazon has a compilation ed edition. Uh, okay, well, I I'll check that out. Um, what was I going to say? Train of thought has left the station. Oh, we should probably schedule these. Maybe every two weeks on a Thursday. And then we'll change the time zones. So that like the next time we do this will be for London time. Doesn't mean anybody can't join us. But 8 p.m. in London, I have no idea what time that is in Australia or whatever. But uh, anyway. So maybe we, how often should we go live? If you would answer right now in the chat. That would be greatly appreciated. Maybe once a month is enough. You know, maybe every other month. Um, let's see. Neil R. Jones. I have not read any Neil R. Jones. Uh, let's see if we can find. I don't want to waste it. Oh, don't see any there. We'll do some more research on that. Went to Whitby the other weekend. We didn't buy Gypsy Lavender and our car broke down. The Curse of the Lavender. I'll write it for you. Once a month or fortnight. Both are good. I, I, I think once a month probably, but I'd like to get more feedback from you. Okay. Any other questions? These are fun. Do as much as possible, Deb says. I spent half my English literature course studying Mary Shelley. Wow, that's interesting. My tutor was obsessed. Asimov enjoyed Joan's portrayal of robots, one of his inspirations. Interesting. I'll do some more research on that. These are fun. Do as much as possible. I really enjoy doing this, the, the live, the audio books, the podcast. I love it. Uh, it's 2.12 in the morning in England. Holy smokes. That's early. This live worked like a kind of planning call, so doing it monthly makes a lot of sense. Rafa, you are correct. I think we need to do one a month. I think we need to do one a month. And uh, I, I, maybe more often, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, you know, the truth of it is I do listen 
to the feedback I get from you. So I, I really do. Uh, science Fiction Reads, don't forget to send me an email, please, scott at lostsci-fi.com. Let's see if we can uh, figure that out. Keep times regular. Deb, the only, the only uh, problem with that or the only issue with that I have is we have people all over the world. In every time zone in the world, I think, we, we have people listening in 103 or 105 countries now. And so I'm trying to appeal to everybody across the globe. And so that's the only reason why I wouldn't do it regularly because it, it won't work for some people. Um, so maybe if we did it twice a month, maybe if we did it twice a month, we could do the standard Thursday night. I don't know if this is the third, third Thursday of the month. We could do the third Thursday of the month, every month, uh, 8 p.m. New York time, which works well for most of our Canadian. Uh, we have a lot of people in Canada that listen to us. And, 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 you know, almost all time zones in the United States, that works. So maybe we could do that and then rotate maybe the first Thursday of the month for all our other, you know, our, our folks in Australia and, um, and all over the world, you know, Europe and all of that. You guys like that idea? I see, I, I think I see hard emojis floating up on the screen. Um, I've really not figured that out. I still don't know um, all I need to know about, about YouTube Live. I'm loving the intimate group of small attendees. When live streams get busy, they get a bit stressful. Yeah. Deb says, more than that. Deb wants more than that. More than twice a month. You know, maybe. Maybe we will. You know, I, to me, honestly, I just appreciate every one of you. I mean, I'm, I'm really sincere when I say that. And I appreciate your feedback. You would not believe the number of emails we get and the comments. Every uh, comment on a YouTube video, I answer personally. I read every one and I answer them personally. Um, so I get a lot of feedback and I value that feedback because the truth, I mean, if I'm just being really, really, really honest with you, and I am, I've gotten great ideas, like the, the whole Halloween thing, Rafa, was a great idea. Um, it was a great idea. And I never even thought about it. Truth, never, never crossed my mind. I am so focused sometimes, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees. Uh, more than that, yes, so make more than one date and time and keep two standards. I, I, that's a good idea. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about the people who who um, listen and I keep wanting to say watch on YouTube, but I don't know how many of you are really watching. I don't think so. I think you're just listening. Um, but I value the the feedback that I get from you. I really do because it makes all of this so much better. Um, you know, I, I learn about new authors that I didn't know, you know, I never knew Mary Shelley did short stories. It's a great idea. I had no idea that she did that until tonight, thanks to you. So, just um, greetings from Warrensburg, Missouri, USA Productions 3. There are not many people probably here live tonight who know where Warrensburg, Missouri is. I do. I've been, uh, I've been through all over Missouri. Anyway, we, I, I, I'm done. <laughs> I am spent. Uh, so the big announcement, a story every day in October. I love your ideas. We're going to have a week leading up to Halloween of spooky stories. Yeah. Uh, you would pick up a lot more subscribers because you're interactive and engaging. Few in this live, but no one is leaving. Cool. That's, a good, that's an excellent suggestion. 
Yeah, I, I you know, somebody um, commented, wear a nice big hat for the next live stream. I don't really have any big hats. Hold on a second. Deb, you're going to know I'm telling you the truth. Once I, I, I promise I won't be long. I'll be right back. Okay, you guys are patient, man. So I'm a big Texas Rangers fan. They don't wear hats much in Costa Rica, I don't think. Uh, I was on television for the last time about a decade ago. So there's a TV hat. And this one's really dirty. And I don't know where my other ones are. But you see that hat, Deb? Do you see it? I'm a huge Razorback fan. I was very disappointed with the loss to BYU last Saturday. And I don't have good feeling about um, LSU this Saturday. And I go out of my way to watch my Arkansas Razorbacks all the time. So that's probably more information. Nobody else probably cares. Maybe Deb cares. Maybe Deb is not even a Razorback fan. Who knows? I appreciate you guys so much. I really do. I say that a lot, but I want you to hear. Um, I, I want you to hear that and know that it's true, because uh, without you, I I got nothing. <laughs> without you, I'm this guy in this little orange booth, three and a half feet, three and a half feet. Um, I think that's like six and a half feet. And I'm just me talking to me. So, you're uh, awesome. Oh, Josh from Arkansas as well. We should all, uh, what a, oh, donate for my hat wardrobe. Uh, that's not necessary, thank you, but I appreciate that. Uh, recommend at least three separate times in North American, Asia, Australia, Indonesia, and Europe. That's an interesting idea. Bravo Zulu, Zulu on the broadcast, Scott. We appreciate you, thank you. I, I don't know Bravo Zulu, Zulu. I don't know what that means. Um, but I'm, I'm certain that it's good. We appreciate your work and love your narration. Thank you. Woo pig suey. Gotcha. Um, I just want to thank you again. I know I've said it a lot, but I mean it. It comes from my heart and, uh, you make what I do worthwhile. Oh, I know BZ is well done. Thank you. Um, I, there was somebody that, that commented on a YouTube video that said, she, uh, what'd she say? Tens of, thousands, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I don't remember which one it was, but it was really cool and it was really nice and it would be really awesome, you know, but I'm thankful for everyone, every subscriber we have on YouTube. W will it grow? Yeah, it's gonna continue to grow. I, I really believe and, and uh, I believe it will continue to grow and grow and grow and it's just more fun having a larger community. Love the podcast and your voice. Thank you, Nathan. Looking forward to many more stories. Me too. You were just on the pig trail last weekend. Is that 23 or 21? I can't remember. 21? 21, I think. You found me through YouTube. Thank you, Brad. Anyway, we could go on for a long time, but I am pooped. I am done. I didn't sleep a lot last night, and I've been busy all day uh, doing all this, preparing for this. And, and uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you very much.